What's going on? We back. Marshy Sports Talk. Homie Gennaro sent me a story on Twitter. Uh, did some investigating. And Adam Gase and the Miami Dolphins kicked the tires or, you know, engaged or tried to engage in trade talk for Matthew Stafford. Let's speak on this. Marshy Sports Talk. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. We working. After that stream last night, I was tired, man. Had to go do, hop on, do some another guy show. And, um, it was good. It was good. I had to cut out early, but uh, I had to take a break. <laughs> well, I'm dropping the first video right now. And, um, you know, he uh, apparently Adam Gates, if you don't know, he has a history with the Detroit Lions. Um, he was here in the Miller era, had a house in Dearborn, just recently sold the house, I think, in Dearborn. And it was hoped from Detroit Lions faithful that Adam Gates would come to Detroit and be the offensive coordinator, which seems uh, seem more and more likely reading this story because adam gase and matt patricia was cool obviously adam gase landing on his feet with the new york jets uh, which i don't even think he deserved that job you know you know but it is what it is he didn't have to work his way back up in the uh nfl with the detroit line i mean with the uh from the miami dolphins to the jets so he got placed back in i thought it was a strong you know possibility he'd come to the lions obviously he had an interest in matthew stafford coming to south beach uh, he called Matt Patricia up. They both cool. Um, and uh, Patricia said they weren't interested in moving Stafford right now. They said minimum he was at least ready to get him the Miami Dolphins 2000 first round pick. It was so funny about it. It was one of the uh, media members that was on Twitter, I believe it was, and said, "Oh, see, Joe Flacco. You know they traded Joe Flacco, and he only got a fifth or sixth, whatever it was, round draft pick. What do you think Stafford's worth is? Shit." They could have got a king ransom from Stanford. They could have got a first and a third and a player back in return. But then again, you sit back and look last year. Uh, I can't remember exactly where the Dolphins sat in the draft last year. But, you know, you sit and look at it this year. I mean, last year, excuse me. What quarterback you was going to get? Baker Mayfield was the only one that was ticking. Everybody else, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. So, you know, the Lions, I don't think they, at that point, you know, I don't think in that point in the offseason they was prepared to have a plan for a quarterback. So at that point, they would have had to hustle up for a quarterback, you know, possibly went to the Indianapolis Colts, try to snag Jacoby Brissett. No Andrew Luck was going to be back. He he a little pricey. He would be pricey because the pending Andrew Luck health. But, I, I mean, would you be able to trade up the first to get Baker? I don't know if they love Baker that much. So it really it really probably boiled down to, for one, Mar Martha Ford loves Matthew Stafford, Okay. She loves Matthew Stafford. They love him internally. But it really would have boiled down to could they throw a pl plan together to evaluate a quarterback or could they got a quarterback quick off the streets or a veteran that can come and write the shit with Detroit and then, you know, then, ne then next year they can draft a quarterback. You know, and that's what it could have been. They could have took that first-round draft pick last offseason in the third, whatever they wanted, first, third, fourth, whatever they was willing to give up. And then you could have took those assets, turned them into assets next year, and got a quarterback in this coming year draft. But do you really love Kyle Murray? You really love Dwayne Haskins right now? So the part of the trade, which would have been iffy, was replacing Matthew Stafford and that being your first season with the Detroit Lions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy. You would have gone there and possibly went 1-15, 2-14 and with a lame duck quarterback, but prepared to build up for next year in the draft. So – Last year's draft didn't have a great quarterback other than Baker. He went number one overall. This year's draft don't have a great quarterback in my opinion. I like Kyle Murray, though, and Haskins in the future. Had this been a situation where, you know, Trevor Lawrence is coming out the following year or you like Tua the following year, I think the Lions would have done it. They would say, look here, you know, whoop -de -whoop -whoop -whoop. we're going to build this defense up and, you know, get a veteran quarterback here to right the ship. And then next year, Martha, you know, ain't going to go how you want this year. Well, they'll never go how you want, but – Next year, we'll draft a quarterback. But looking at this year's draft class and looking at next year's draft class, you know, they probably was like, man, ain't nobody seen no uh, uh, Kyle Murray doing what he was doing uh, from last year, this year, going from Texas A&M to the Big 12 in uh, Oklahoma. But me personally, I can understand why they didn't do it, you know, because who are you going to replace Stafford with that quick? What quarterback can you evaluate in the middle of the offseason? Usually, you evaluating quarterbacks from the beginning of the season and what September – October, you evaluating quarterbacks then. They figure, like, we got our quarterback of the future, Matthew Stafford. We good. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do this and whoop de whoop 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 You know, usually evaluating quarterback is a season, a year-long thing almost. 
And if you ain't been evaluating quarterback, you don't want to go out there in the draft and you want to rush and evaluate a quarterback, get to know him, and he don't work out. So that, the dead money that was after would have left behind would have been humongous, would have been $20 million. That was humongous. Um, obviously, it's year one in the Matt Patricia system. Um, they probably didn't want to do it that way. But me personally, if the deal was right, anybody can go on this team. You know, but you got to have a contingency plan. And, and Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn didn't have one. You know, when you think you got an established quarterback in Matt Patricia first year, you know, you ain't thinking about, okay, I should bring this quarterback in. No, you thinking like, okay, let me get my defense together. We'll be weak at offensive line, running back, whoop de whoop whoop. So, you know, had Adam Gates stayed this year, they make that deal this year, you know, for with a draft pick next year, the Lions, the Lions probably would have done it with, with uh, Herbert and Tua coming out next year. They probably would have done it this year. You know, especially with uh, Stafford cap hit down to ten million uh, after June, they probably would have traded for next year first and, and did a couple things next year. It would have made sense, but I don't really believe they believe in Stafford like that. I said that again. Um, I think they really treasure having Tom Brady and I, and that's my personal opinion. But you know, it was tough to do last year, even though the money was right. I mean, excuse me, even though the the, the, the compensation would have been great. Um, but still, they only won what five or six games this year, so. You know, we, we you know, we gotta see, man. If Adam Gates would have held the ship down one more year and was able to make that deal this year after June, the Lions would have did it, I'm telling you. They would have did it. But, you know, it is what it is, man. You know. At least somebody had interest in Matthew Stafford for good money. And just looking at it from Stafford aspect going down to Miami, shit, that's a huge upgrade as far as um, you know, surroundings. I mean, beaches, you know, they would have packed up and he got rid of his house in a heartbeat. They probably would have raffled his house off and got – man, Stafford would have been gone in, in a week. He would have been gone that day and just told them to ship his shit down to Georgia or ship his shit down to Miami. He had been gone. They would have got a crib down there, structured his contract, probably extended him or whatever the situation may be, let him ride his contract out. He would have went down there and, and just been like, you taste the air? And Mike has for it. It different down here. Same humidity, a little bit more hot. But, um, yeah, man. You know, he would have went down there. Um, maybe they wouldn't have traded Juice Landry. I mean, but that's a tough – that was a tough, tough thing to do down there. I had some young receivers, Kenny Stills, Devontae, uh, the, the kid from uh, Louisville that ain't really never got together. Um, you know, Amendola was already down there. There was another guy they got down there. I can't remember all their receivers, but they had a good receiving course, some young receivers. All right, running game, you know, uh, okay defense. Nothing special with Miami. I think the Lions overall was a better surrounding team for Stafford than Miami. But, hey, you in Miami, you know, he would have been enjoying himself down there. And I think they would have probably never traded Landry, you know, to continue to put more stuff around him. Um, Will Matthew Stafford made the Dolphins a contender? No. No, but Adam Gases does an excellent job, you know. So I wanted him as an offensive coordinator, you know, kind of molding his offense around what the quarterback does well. You know, okay, Jay Cutler got problems doing this. This is what we're going to do with him. Going to limit his deep passes, make it easy for him, run the ball. So, you know, I don't think Stafford would have been a superstar in Miami. Now, if you put him, you know, you know, in another team before Watson got to Houston or before, you know, put him in Denver or, you know, maybe a few of them other teams, Kansas City before Mahomes got there, I think he could have made some things happen. But Miami is pretty much in the same boat just below us. They just don't know what direction they're going in. They got some good defensive players. Trader Landry, you know, you're still rolling with Frank Gore and the other running back down. It's just, it's not, it's not an attractive team. Team, I think our team is more attractive than theirs. It's just that day in Miami and, and being in a, 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 a destination where everybody want to be. Miami Dolphins should be better. Real talk, Stephen Ross should do a lot better than with Miami. I mean, that's somewhere that free agents would love to go. They take less, they tax, no state taxes. A lot of guys take less to go to Miami, but hey. That's just an organization that's damn near run just as bad as the Lions is over, you know, over their they history. But, you know, it is what it is. I'll link that article to the description so I prove that it's factual. But it never – the talks never got deep. It never even scratched the surface. So, um, so Matthew Stafford ain't got nothing to worry about, you know. So it's kind of like your girl, a dude coming up to your girl, asking her if she got a boyfriend. She's like, no, I do got a boyfriend, whoop de whoop It wasn't like, no, nah, you know, he ain't got to know nothing as long as he don't find out. And, they really, you know, start flirting around with the Dolphins about trading them. Then Stafford can feel some type of way. But it is what it is. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, response, share video request. Do me a favor. Share the videos. Motor Street Sports Talk. Let me know how y'all feel. We gone.